All right, inverse functions. An inverse function undoes what the original function did. Let's say you're the function and you make your bed every morning. That would make your little sibling who undoes your bed and jumps on it up and down the inverse function because it makes it undone again. Um, we use for the inverse function f to the negative 1 of x. We read it f inverse of x has nothing to do with negative exponents, everything to do with just the inverse. Um, and so, let's just start with some simple examples. If 3 times x is the function, if we multiply by 3, the opposite of multiplying by 3 is dividing by 3, and so x divided by 3, or 1 third of x, is going to be the inverse function. If we have divided by 3, the opposite of dividing by 3 is multiplying by 3. And so g inverse is going to be 3x. What's the opposite of adding 3? Subtracting 3. And so all of these, if you take it through the original function and through the inverse function, you get back to where you started from. For example, if we start at 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, and then we go to the inverse, 8 minus 3 is 5, so we get back to where we started from. If we start with 6, 6 divided by 3 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6. And so they undo each other. Um, because the beginning of the one becomes the end of the other, they just swap places, and so the little rhyme I use is switch the x and y, it's as easy as pi. Yes, it's corny, but yes, it works. So. 0, negative 3, 1, negative 1, 2, 1, 3, 3, 4, 5. It's just a bunch of coordinates. First off, is it a function? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. All of them are different x's. No repeated x's. So, yes, it is a function. Because remember, it's if you repeat the x, it's got two different answers for the same question and we don't want that. The inverse of the relation is just switching it. If 0 goes to negative 3 in the function, negative 3 is going to go to 0 in the inverse. Negative 1 is going to go to 1, 1 is going to go to 2, and all I'm doing is swapping the x for the y, and the y for the x. All they do is swap places. So this right here is just a bunch of Algebra 1 stuff. What we're going to be doing is more so down here. So, to find an inverse function, what I want to do is just take us through this. If we want to find what f of 4 is, what we would do is say f of 4 is when you take the 4 and plug it in for the x. So 2 times the square root of 4 minus 3, and then we add the 5. So if we were to follow order of operations, we have to subtract this 3 first. And we get 2 times the square root of 1 plus 5. Square root of 1 is 1, so that's 2 times 1 plus 5. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 5 is 7. So in order to find the inverse, we're going to do the exact opposite thing in the exact opposite order. So in order to find the 7, what we did first was we subtracted... 3. And then we took the square root, and then we multiplied by 2, and then we added 5. So what we're going to do is do that in the exact opposite order. First we're going to do the opposite of adding 5. So we'll subtract 5. Then we'll do the opposite of multiplying by 2. We'll divide by 2. Then we'll do the opposite of square rooting, which is squaring, so I'm going to write raising it to the second power, just like the caret. Opposite of subtracting 3, add 3. So, the inverse function, f inverse of x, is going to be, if we subtract 5 from x, then we divide by 2, and then we square it, and then we add 3. Now, you can do this every single time, and there's no reason why you can't. But most of the time what we do is just switch the x and the y, and then resolve it again for y. And so that's what I'm going to do on the next one. 
So, switch the x and the y, it's as easy as pi. If you don't have a y value, just remember that our f of x value is the same thing as our y. So let's switch the x and the y. So x becomes negative 3y plus 5. What we're doing is switching the beginning and the end so that the begin comes the end and the end becomes the beginning. And that's how they're going to undo each other. So first thing we have to do now is solve again for y. Subtract the 5. So x minus 5 equals negative 3y. And then we divide by negative 3. So x minus 5 over negative 3. That is our inverse function. You could also separate these so that it's x over negative 3 minus, and it's a negative 5 over a negative 3, so it's really a positive 5 thirds. Either one of these are the exact same thing. I prefer this one because it looks prettier, although if I was going to graph it, I would graph this so that I could see negative 1 third times the x would be my slope. So, f of f inverse. This is a little composition review to show to prove a point. If we take our inverse function and plug it into our f, take our inverse function and plug it into our f, um, we find negative 3, and instead of writing x, I'm going to write my inverse function, x minus 5 times negative 3 plus 5. Negative 3 times this, if you remember fractions, we can just cross cancel our negative 3 because they have that in common x minus 5 plus 5, minus 5 plus 5, that cancels out, and you're left with just x. This will happen every single time with inverse functions. It's a property of inverses. Anytime you take the function, take the inverse, and then the function back to back, you'll end up with just x, whatever you started from. It's what we were talking about at the beginning. If you add 3 and then subtract 3, you're right back where you started from. These are just more... Um, functions worked in there. And so the same thing works backwards if you take the function and plug it into the inverse. Um, negative 3x plus 5 in the place of our other function. Divide by negative 3. So negative 3x plus 5 minus 5. This plus 5 and this minus 5 cancel each other out. So you're left with negative 3x divided by negative 3. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. So you get x. That will happen every single time, and that's actually how you prove functions are inverses of each other. I'm going to ask you to show that by showing the composition f inverse of f of x that you get x. Graphically, if you graph this, our original function, negative 3x plus 5, is a line has, this is our b, this is our m, so we could 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's our y-intercept, and then our slope is 3 over 1, down 1, 2, 3, over 1, 1, 2, 3, over 1, 1, 2, 3, over 1. So you can graph this, not a problem. Remember, remember our inverse functions are just the opposite. So if this 2, 1 is a point on our function, the point 1, 2 is going to be a point on our inverse. If the point, sorry, 2, comma, negative 1. 2, comma, negative 1 is a point, so the point negative 1, comma, 2 is going to be a point on our inverse. The point